Force Destiny, Chapter 12 Ray needed an escape from her thoughts. When the conflicting emotions inside her made it impossible to sleep after her confrontation with Kylo, she sought her friends for comfort. She couldn't be alone with his presence in her mind, taunting her, tempting her, any longer. She quietly sat at the table next to Finn and Poe. They had raided the cabinets for supply bars and ration cubes. It looked light years more appetizing than portions. Ray, are you feeling okay? Finn asked carefully. She could blame her lack of sleep solely on the foreign sensation of hyperspace travel. After crying into her bunk all night, she imagined she looked a bit worse for wear. It hadn't helped that she was already wide awake before she interrupted the giant man-child she was connected with through the Force. I'm okay. I've just been processing a lot, you know? This has all been eventful. I'm just grateful we'll be on a solid ground soon. She smiled her best fake smile, and the trusting man that Finn was, despite his harrowing upbringing, took it at face value. Ray knew she had to tell him the truth eventually. He had been honest with her, but she didn't know what to say that wouldn't risk losing the closest thing she had to a family since escaping Jakku. How could she explain her bond with Kylo? The last time she saw him awake before Kraid was during their fight with Kylo on Starkiller, when her eventual bondmate nearly killed Finn. Even though the fateful night had only occurred a few weeks ago, it felt like an eternity. Without her tally marks scratched into the hull of her ATAT, she was losing track of time. Since leaving Yaku, so much had happened, so much she couldn't explain. Are you sleeping? Is it nightmares? He asked softly. About him? Something like that, she replied, a tender grin lifting her cheeks. Finn cared. There weren't many in her life that did. It thawed her cold heart. Thank you, my friend, for caring. I woke up terrified for you, he admitted. That monster had just killed Han. I saw the evil in his eyes. He was strong and fast. I don't know how you did it, Ray. And I heard she gave him a giant scar down his face to remember her by, Poe added. I wish I could have returned the favor after he tortured me. Well, torture isn't a strong enough word for it. What am I saying? You were taken prisoner he said, gesturing to Ray. You know that mind-splitting agony, too. Ray blushed. Yes, I remember. What did he do to you? Finn demanded. Her friend had always been protective of her, but there was an edge to his voice that warned of danger. I swear to you, if he... Don't worry. He didn't really hurt me, Finn, she insisted. It was uncomfortable and humiliating when he searched through my private dreams and memories, but I was able to force him out of my mind. Then I searched his instead and scared him off. He never even looked for the map before I escaped. And there I was, thinking you needed to be rescued. Finn laughed. Ray smiled. Perhaps she hadn't needed rescuing in a classic sense, but she was grateful he had cared enough to come back for her. Her spirits were temporarily lightened, but there was something, something inside her, a silent voice that was always there, and it was demanding her attention. What it wanted her to know, it felt wrong, like a warning. She had felt it before, in the forest of Takadona, overlooking the skywalk on Starkiller, in the throne room of the Supremacy. Now it was warning her again. Danger. But it wasn't until she heard Poe's foreboding words that she understood why. Wait, you're telling me you had seen the one thing he was willing to kill and torture anyone for, and all he did was search through your dreams? Poe's countenance had changed in an instant. His smile had disappeared, and the warmth had faded from his eyes. He stared at her suspiciously, but it was his voice that left her the most uneasy. He had never spoken to her with such distrust before. Her heartbeat quickened under his interrogative tone. Ray was still new to meaningful social interactions that weren't centered around quid pro quo. She found herself relaxing in the presence of her new friends, but she had clearly said too much. A tingling panic twisted up her spine. She chose her reply verily. 
careful not to reveal any more incriminating information. Yes, that's what I said. And then you nearly kill the man who could freeze blaster bolt and carry on a conversation like it's nothing? A man who has destroyed worlds? You? A scavenger from Yaku who had never been trained with a lightsaber. Had never even held one. She swallowed her offense at the demeaning air to his words. Why had his disposition changed over a simple recount of her interrogation? Why was he being so cruel over nothing? Didn't he trust her? She was confused. Poe had always been kind to her. That sounds like something Kyla would say. Will you call me nothing next? Well, he was injured, Finn interjected, coming to her defense. She smiled at him in gratitude. Poe, however, would not be so easily convinced. And yet he easily bested you, a trained killer of the First Order, and left you for dead like it was nothing. Though he was speaking to Finn, Poe's eyes never strayed from hers. She felt naked, exposed, just as she had in the interrogation room. Even though this man did not have the force to confirm his suspicions, it was as if he could look right through her defenses anyway. What does he think he knows? Ray did not have a satisfactory answer for why the events had turned in her favor. She fidgeted uncomfortably under his accusatory gaze. She knew she should tell them that more had happened between Kylo and herself than they knew. They deserved to know, but his demeanor frightened her. If he became angry over the trivial events of the interrogation, what would he do when he discovered the truth? How could she explain to them that the man in the hut was the same man who had tortured one of them and nearly killed the other? How could she make them understand when she didn't understand it herself? How could she explain that she risked everything, their lives, to go to him on the supremacy? How could she tell them that she agonized over a bond that she still shared with him? What would they think of her? What would they do? I think he's scared of her, Finn joked, breaking the heaviness in the air. Yes, that must be it, Poe agreed, though his tone was less jovial. His charming demeanor had to return, but his voice was deeper, more very. You are a force to be reckoned with, Ray, no pun intended. He smiled and winked in a way that made her pulse quicken. He returned to his food, but she could almost see the wheels turning in his head. The abrupt change between suspicious and charismatic disconcerted her. Her intuition, the voice inside her, told her not to trust him, and that terrified her. If she couldn't trust a member of the Resistance, who could she trust? How is Rose doing? She asked Finn, changing the subject. She knew Finn had been preoccupied lately with sitting vigil at her bedside, and though she hadn't sat with him as much as she had wanted, Ray still wanted him to know she cared. Good, I think, he said, his smile fading. As good as she can be. He glanced away, and Ray realized Finn was clearly not comfortable yet discussing the new woman with her. She would make friends with her, too, proving him that he had no reason to be concerned. They had quite the adventure sneaking on the supremacy, Poe said conspiratorially, though his smile dropped for a second, as she could sense the regret in his voice. They were so close to preventing this disaster. You were on the supremacy? Ray choked on her food. When it was hit? A slew of new fears rattled around her mind. Could they have seen her or know that she was there? If they asked, how would she explain why she had gone there or why she hadn't told them? Yeah, it was nice to get a little payback. Too bad we couldn't take out Snoke or Kylo Ren while we were there. Finn replied dryly before tilting his head back and, and tossing a bite of food into his mouth. Poe mimicked the action, tossing it higher. Based upon the cheers of the others, catching food in their mouth was a game. There was so much about social interactions Ray had yet to understand. At least Snoke is dead, Ray said around her own mouthful. She took several more bites of food with her fingers before she felt the weight of the silence around her. She glanced up slowly. 
They stared at her in shock, utensils abandoned mid-bite, and she wondered if she was doing it again, acting out of the societal norm. She reached for a utensil in shame. What? Poe finally rasped. Only then were the consequences of her words made apparent. She had hoped they knew Leia was Force-sensitive, after all. Considering how high-profile that monster was, she had presumed the entire Resistance had learned Snoke's death by the time they reached Crate. Someone else would have had to step up as Supreme Leader. Certainly, the Holonet must have mentioned something. At the very least, wouldn't they question whether Snoke survived the destruction? Yes, I... well, I felt it. The Force, she stammered. She hoped her lie was convincing enough, though realistically she knew it wasn't. After growing up on the unscrupulous planet of Yaku, Rei had learned to lie to survive. Those practices carried over to her time with the Resistance. It had been natural to lie to Luke on the island and now to her friends to protect herself, to survive. Her lies had gone unquestioned until she met Kylo, and he saw through every single one of them. It had destabilized her having another person see through everything to who she truly was. When he had exposed her lies, she hated the vile, slimy feeling that clawed inside her. She didn't want to feel it again, not with these people, not with the truth and its consequences actually mattered. Her fear overwhelmed her. Her breaths became short and fast, her body trembled. No, it wasn't her body, she realized as the others stared down at the table. It quaked violently under her clenched fists. What is happening to me? How am I doing this? Ray stood abruptly, excusing herself from her friends. I have to go. I forgot I have to check on something. She smiled, but the skepticism on their faces was evident. Finn tried to call after her, and she felt Poe's eyes burn holes into her back as she stood up. It was all too much, and she felt something building inside her, demanding release. In her haste to escape, she crashed into Chewbacca. The Wookiee caught her before she fell, stilling her in his large furry arms. Though he had distracted her from her meltdown, her entire body began shivering in a new fear, and something else. That smell. She couldn't remember a single detail about her parents, but she knew exactly why that smell was familiar. Chewy? What is that? Why do you smell like... Ben? Ray caught herself before she said something she couldn't explain to her friends. He cocked his head and responded in Sherivok, which thankfully none of her friends were able to understand. Trillium soap? They used the same soap? He patted her knowingly. He knew what she was thinking, who she was thinking about, because he knew who else used the soap in his thick and unruly hair. She remembered that before he had been her confusing bondmate, before Chewie had wounded him on Starkiller after he killed his best friend, Kylo had been the boy the Wookiee had once known well. Chewie also knew where she had gone before Crate. He had been the one to dry her tears, after all when he had rescued her from Snoke's escape pod, and he was the one to tell her there were still hope to turn Kylo after they saved their friends. There was a time and a place to grieve, he had told her, and a time and a place to fight. It had reminded her very much of Han. Chewbacca had been nothing but supportive of her, more than she could say for Luke, and she liked to imagine Han would have been the same. She was most thankful that Chewbacca mentioned none of that as he took her space next to her friends, allowing her the grace to tell them in her own time. Her friends were curious about their strange exchange, but none of them said another word. Ray left before the tears began to fall or she began moving objects unwittingly again. Why does everything remind me of him? Why can't I escape him? Ray felt her thoughts flow into the space his consciousness held in her mind. No sooner had she screamed those words than she felt the force around her begin to buzz. The sound around her became muted. She could feel a tightened sensation in her mind before the familiar silence in the force. Another connection was impending. She could feel it. 
She ducked into the nearest cargo hall and fell against the door as it closed behind her. There he stood in front of her at the viewport of the command bridge, as if she had been instantly transported to the finalizer. She was falling apart remembering the smell of him, but this man was not the remorseful man she had seen on his knees on crate, nor the capricious one she had seen since. His shoulders were squared, his voice as steady as the dysfunctional mask would allow, his gloved hands casually gesturing. His physicality exuded sovereignty and confidence. His restrained demeanor and poise reminded her of the interrogation room on Starkiller. But this version was stable, yet intimidating. His commanding energy drew all eyes to him. Her heart skipped a beat. Without a doubt, Ray knew that this, this was what Kylo Ren looked like. This was not the gentleman from the hut on Octo. This was the enemy that everyone else saw. It should have made it easier to hate him. He chose the First Order instead of the Light, instead of her. He had killed his father, tried to kill Finn, tortured Poe, caused Luke's death, tried to kill his own mother, and Rose, and everyone else in the Resistance for that matter. He tried to kill them all. She wished she had her quarterstaff to beat him over the head with until he bled light. Every second she watched the man should have solidified her belief that there was no hope for him. But with his smell still tormenting her senses, she couldn't forget the memories of the man she believed would turn. His back was turned to her, but she could see that he was speaking with another member of the First Order with neatly combed red hair. The man stared around the room, and the movement of his stare was fluid as it passed over her, almost as if he were looking through her. There was no reaction to her presence at all. Her friends had been equally ignorant, so she knew it was unlikely that she was visible for him. There was someone she was visible for, however. Ray held her breath, hoping Kylo wouldn't notice her, while also finding she wished he would. She listened to his conversation intently, trying to find the answers to what had happened to him in the throne room. Excellent, Hux. When your troops narrow down which of those planets is harboring the last of the resistance, you know my orders. Kylo pressed the release on his helmet and removed it. The red-haired man eyed him suspiciously, but he did not comment. She almost turned away so she wouldn't have to see him when he looked upon her with Ben Solo's eyes. The other officer spoke next, and although it sounded as if he was underwater, she was able to hear him clearly. We will execute on sight, no prisoners, but what of the girl? She held her breath, knowing what girl the officer meant. The orders are clear, are they not? Kylo said. It was his voice, but it sent a chill down her spine. Even under his mask, she had never heard him sound so... inhuman. Burning betrayal twisted through her chest as Kylo turned and glared directly into her eyes. His pupils were blown, his eyes black and emotionless. They were not the eyes of the man who had saved her from Snoke. These were the eyes of a monster. She tried to suppress her tears the agony squeezing the air from her lungs until it hurt to breathe. He had known she was standing there the entire time. Don't say anything. Don't you dare give him that satisfaction. Should she not be held on trial for her assassination of the Supreme Leader? The other man replied. Kylo hesitated, never taking his cruel eyes off her. Leave her to me. I can feel her through the force. There is nowhere she can hide that I can't find her. I'll hunt down every last rebel. I'll force her to watch me kill them all. Once I've destroyed everything she loves, then I'll destroy her too. He said it so calmly, so apathically, it sounded as if he was talking about nothing of consequence. She clenched her jaw so the sob wouldn't escape her throat. Are you sure that's wise? She has defeated you twice. The other man sniveled, and it was clear to Ray that these two men were not on the best of terms. Kylo interrupted him, and she was foolish enough to not finish it. 
it will be her own destruction. Yes, Supreme Leader, the other man said in a tone far from reverent. Supreme Leader. Those words stung more than the others. Certainly she should have realized he had killed the previous Supreme Leader, after all. He had asked her to join him there. Why wouldn't he be the one to ascend the throne? The events of the throne room made better sense now. She swore she wouldn't say a word, but she felt so exposed, so betrayed. You killed Snoke, you coward! Her voice trembled. You call Finn a traitor, but the traitor is you. Why don't you tell them all what really happened? You didn't kill Snoke to save me. You killed him to become more powerful. You used me to help kill your guards because you weren't strong enough to kill them on your own. And then you blamed it all on me. Luke was right. I was so foolish. I fell for it all. The bond, the vision, the whispers in the elevator, everything. It was all an illusion by you. You didn't want me to join you. You just wanted someone to blame your mess on. There's no light left in you. I will not shed a tear for a monster. He walked past her slowly and deliberately, as if she were nothing. His words from the throne room echoed in her head. You're nothing to this story. You're nothing. You just used me because I'm nothing, right? She whispered. Relief flooded her body as he suddenly disappeared back to his ship across the galaxy. She could feel the cold trickle of darkness slithering against her consciousness, and in a moment of weakness she allowed it in. It had found her in battle, but she never realized its other benefits. It fed on her fear, anger, and despair, minimizing the nagging thoughts of loneliness, abandonment, and betrayal, and easing her emotional pain. Ray, a voice warned. Luke. She pushed his warning aside. Luke didn't understand. He hadn't even wanted to teach her because she went straight to the dark. He was jaded by what had happened to his father and his nephew, but they had chosen the dark side. Ray wouldn't. Nothing terrible had happened in the cave Luke had warned her about. She had used the darkness on Starkiller and not fallen to its temptations. She was stronger than Kylo. She could control it. She supposed this once she could allow a little more in, and then a little more, until she felt nothing, only for a moment of peace. She was startled when a foreign voice whispered in her head. It sounded like the whispers of the force she had heard on Tagadona and Aktu. The others echoed the sentiment, but one dominant voice was familiar. This wasn't the vague calls of the other whispers of the Force. This was the one from Starkiller. Kill him, it had commanded her back then. She hadn't listened, but she bemoaned the heartache it would have saved if she had. The whisper continued to guide her as it had then. He only killed his master for power. You mean nothing to him. This is why he so willingly brought you to be tortured by his master. He never cared for you. He chose the power and the darkness over you. He ordered for you to be shot down on crate. He told Luke he would destroy you. He will kill you and your friends. You must kill him first. The voice disappeared in the forest as a cold wave flowed over her, calming her. Come find me, Kylo. I dare you. I'll be ready. And this time, I won't spare your life. <laughs>